we're sitting here with another team at the AICC Challenge, which is the AI Cybersecurity Challenge. They were supposed to make an autonomous team to both find bugs and automatic patch them. There's whole content around what it is. We want to sit down with you guys talking about your approach, what you did, how is your approach different than other teams, how it works, some of the challenges. So let's start off here. When you guys first heard of this challenge, why did you decide to join the AICC? Oh, maybe I can start. So I heard this challenge uh, in Black Hat 2023, if I remember it correctly, uh, because um, um, my, my student and I are presenting our works at the Black Hat. Uh, and uh, when uh, Perry Adams uh, announced that the DARPA is going to have this competition, uh, it's going to explore whether AI techniques can be used to solve some security issues, especially to find bugs and uh, and patch bugs. And I think it's, it's it's quite exciting and it's a very interesting topic. And also, I'm, I mean, also, I mean, as a, someone from academia, we also always wants to explore something that uh, nobody else has already explored. Right. So that's. And then I quickly shared this uh, information with uh, some of my other friends, including my previous advisors uh, in academia, and asked if they are interested and if we can team up or something like that. Right. So that's basically how the story begins. It's like, okay, interesting thing, we should do interesting things. That's it. So you formed a team, mm -hmm. you started it. Was there a baseline of like, here is how I think we're going to do it? Because you were allowed to use commercial tools if you wanted to, you could use an off-the-shelf orchestration system. You could kind of decide how much of large language models what you wanted to do. What was like your initial approach of how you thought you were going to build it? And then how did you end up building it? Oh, yeah. So that's a great question. Because, you know, like the, the, the techniques to find bugs and patch bugs have already been developed for decades. There are lots of mature tools, uh, like fuzzing tools, or static analysis tools. And of course, at the very beginning, we always want to explore whether these tools can work or not. Right. So... Uh, so at the very beginning, I remember it's like um, about like three months. We have lots of debate, lots of discussion, and lots of like evaluation of the existing tools, and we're trying to figure out okay whether this tool works, whether that tool works, and how can we introduce machine learning techniques to kind of like uh, orchestrate these tools. So have lots of uh, testing, lots of evaluation, and we come up with a very initial design, which is uh, we I mean at the very beginning we propose a solution is like we are going to be uh, uh, build lots of agents. Uh, in a system using these agents to, for example, call this tool to get some results and using the agents is based on la uh, large language model, right? So, and the agents is going to use the reasoning capability provided by the model to orchestrate uh, the tradition tools to get results that we want and how to put, put the output of this tool to the, uh, as input to another tool or something like that. So that's our initial uh, solution. Um, and uh, during the competition, we we, slide, uh, we gradually find some limitations of existing traditional tools and also limitations of the foundation model. So we, uh, we modified the design a little bit uh, and we're trying to figure out, especially trying to figure out how to deal with the uh, hallucination of the foundation model. And finally, we make a, uh, I mean, our final approach is like we still have lots of classical tools in our system, but still we are using foundation model to kind of like, uh, for example, use it to, to develop patches, and we also use foundation, uh, use some like, uh, maybe you can call them classical AI uh, techniques, not uh, like uh, large language model, something like the neural network or something like even like decision tree in our system, trying to do some small uh, tasks, and then we're going to use a system that are going to orchestrate all these classical tools and also uh, AI tools. So uh, just a little bit of background on, on your team. Have you guys competed in def, like traditional DEF CON CTF before? Are you a relatively new team? Have you all attended DEF CON previously? Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah. this guy is from the... Uh, yeah. Maybe yeah, so I was previously uh, played DEF CON for Cat Zipin. Yeah, his previous name is AOE. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. and I was previously affiliated with another team called the Down Team. So in your solution for the cyber challenge, did you use any existing frameworks from your prior interactions with either DEF CON, CTF, or prior? I know there was a previous competition, the Grand Challenge. Um, had you, did you use any existing frameworks that you were already using, or did you spin up everything new uh, for this challenge? Uh, we are not starting from scratch. Okay. 
Uh, and unfortunately, I, I didn't have the chance to participate in the grand challenge because at that time I'm still, you know, <laughs> I'm still uh, doing my uh, undergraduates. Um, so we use lots of ex existing tools uh, like the AFL and also ex other tools. Um, but I think uh, because I mean it's a it's a challenge, right? So challenge means that you cannot just build a system using the off-shelf tools. You must have some innovations in it. Right, so we use some uh, existing techniques, but we also introduce lots of like emerging techniques, lots of new stuff into the system. Yeah. So you say emerging techniques. What, can you explain what one of the emerging techniques would have been? Oh, yeah. So yeah, emerging techniques. I mean, in this context, is of course the machine learning techniques, right? So lots of uh, different machine learning models, not only large language models, but also other techniques that we can leverage to uh, make the system more uh, automated and make the system to be less uh, Oracle guided. Well, be, be more specific. Like, mm -hmm. What technically were you adding on that was something new, novel, which you said it's an emerging technique. What, what, what specifically? Oh, yeah. So, so because this system is trying to find bugs and patch bugs, right? So we have different uh, uh, components, or we call, it, call them subsystems. Uh, in the two, and we have components for the uh, for finding bugs, components for patching bugs. So uh, for patching bugs, we are um, mainly rely on the foundation models, uh, large language models, and we also use some uh, tools to verify that the patch uh, uh, the patch generated by the model is uh, correct and does does uh, remediate uh, the bugs. So uh, that's for the patching components. And for the components that's trying to find bugs, uh, because in the final, we have a new model, which is called Delta model, which basically is like, we have some code change, uh, some code diff, and they're trying to figure out whether this code diff will introduce new bugs or not. Right, so uh, we use an uh, existing technique, which is called direct fuzzing, to uh, find bugs in the code diff. But the direct, direct fuzzing means, basically means that like you must have some guidance about where the fuzzing should go. Right, so we must give some feedback to direct fuzzing, and we introduce uh, some, uh, neuron, uh, some machine techniques trying to prove the call graphs generated by classical tools. For example, the, the classical tools can always generate some false positives, which will make the efforts uh, diluted. But the machine learning uh, techniques is able to prune some core edges in the core graph, and then we can be more focused on the target. There are some examples. Yeah. So <clears throat> this competition went over the course of two years, mm -hmm. and we all kind of know that the language, large language models have gotten a lot better in the past two years, and some mm -hmm. of them have gotten worse. But uh, <laughs> Did you find anything surprising as time went on about how your techniques started mm -hmm. using the large language models uh, versus how they were, we'll say, in the second year? Like, how, how did your approach change over the first year to the second year, maybe with the patching mechanisms or the guided fuzzing mechanisms? Did anything surprise you? Yeah, of course. So personally, I think I kind of underestimate the large language model at the very beginning. So it's almost two years ago. At that time, we only have models which uh, the G like GPT-4 and the Cloud-4 wasn't there, right? And GPT-5, yeah, of course, wasn't there. So I, I kind of like underestimate the capability of the of the of the uh, large language model. So at the very beginning, we have lots of doubts about them. So that is why we choose to use, for example, lots of classical techniques in our system. But the development of large language model is, uh, you know, very surprising. Um, and uh, nowadays, people are talking about like agents, and agents wasn't there about two years ago. So, yeah, I have to admit that we kind of like underestimate the development of large language models. So, uh, actually, that uh, I don't think we fully uh, leverage the capability of large language models, which is actually the our future direction. Is like we want to introduce more. Uh, introduce more uh, techniques from the large language model to trying to make our system better and to be more general across different software. Yeah, it's interesting to me when we talked to the other teams is it seemed that the teams that did better in the contest relied l a lot more on the large language models than mm -hmm. others where they didn't just use the classical tools and the ones that really embraced it and pushed forward. Did you notice that as well? You, you guys, do you think one of the things that made you do better in the contest was that you relied on large language models more, or that you relied on more of the classical attacks more? Uh, so maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, there are different stages. Um, I, I mean, at the first, very first beginning, 
will uh, like try to find bugs and uh, the very uh, and the next one we will try to fix bugs and for the like a portion of the large language models i think the most of the credit or large language models are used to generating patches and for the very first stage like uh, um, i developed a system that for generating uh, PUC or initial seed for fuzzy. Um, this is a comb combination um, of uh, like a traditional way and uh, AI way to find a kind of a, uh, to find the a effective um, path to a potential vulnerability um, sync point. And uh, for like uh, oh for the finals, they introduce uh, another mode like a serif mode, it, the, which is like they broadcast a static analysis result in like kind of G JSON uh, JSON format, and uh, they just want us to verify this is true positive or false positive. Uh, we use pure large language models, the AI way to verify the uh, the results. Uh, and uh, thanks to uh, the MCP, uh, because MCP, the uh, model context protocol, is um, very new in this year and uh, it's very popular. So thanks to MCP, we can very integrate very fast with large language models. Yeah, and this part is pure AI, I think. Yeah. So I know that the teams obviously have been working in relative secrecy, uh, you know, across from each other, but uh, the contest was structured such that everyone uh, needs to open source their solution at the end. Uh, have two questions. Have you gotten any time? I know everything just got released and you're talking about it. Have you gotten any time to look at what the other teams did for the competition? And are you planning to go back and continue working on your current solution to evolve it further? Uh, I think um, kind of improvement, I think for the like AI portions is, <laughs> I, I, I have to admit that we underestimated the power of the large language models portion. So I think for the most uh, significant part, part should be we, we can use everything, uh, we can use AI to everything, every part of our component and it will, I think from the results, yeah. Um, yeah, yesterday I saw every team use large language models in every part of their component. I think it will be, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah so uh, after announcement, we actually have lots of discussions with other teams and trying to explore like what other, what other teams are doing with uh, with agents and the large language model. Uh, and uh, so that's why like, I'm thinking like because um, kind of like underestimate the capability of large language models at the very beginning. But I think, I mean, it's the end of a competition, but it's not the end of the game of exploring larger network model for uh, vulnerability finding and vulnerability patching. That's just a start, right? Yeah, and, it, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's been fun asking the teams. Like in hindsight, what if you if you had perfect vision of the past, what advice would you give to your past self? And a lot of teams are saying that we wish we would have relied on them more. We underestimated them. Is there something specific where you, if you could give yourself one piece of advice before the contest started? What would that advice be? So for me, so actually, I mean, our team, you know, the, the system that developed by our teams are very excellent at finding bugs. So actually, we are the second in finding bugs, and we are the first uh, reporting the serif uh, reports. Uh, but we are not doing very well at uh, patching bugs. Um, so actually, it's not because we are not using large argument, large argument a lot. It's because like because some like small bugs some critical but small but critical bugs in our uh, integration right so if i'm going to give some advice to to myself like two years ago i would say we should put more efforts in integration uh put more efforts into the engineering things but more importantly is so i'm thinking is like maybe we can instead of using the the oracles or heuristics to integrate the system i would say okay could you explore more potential of using large language model to integrate the system because larger language model could be it likely to be more general and more flexible than the traditional approaches yeah. what about you guys yeah it's for me it's to not change the code at that time yeah i mean we did pretty well like the fun vulnerabilities yeah we want to sacrifice yeah find bugs and submit them but yeah, as you know, the uh, the scoreboard, uh, we didn't patch so much. Yeah, yeah, that's why we introduced a small box 
at the deadline before the like submitting the code to the to the DARPA. Yeah, and that uh, the small mistake uh, provide us uh, like submit eighty percent of our patches to the final. Yeah, so if I said to the previous myself, I would say like just keep the code, do not change at the very end. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually very interesting. Is like actually we found these small but the critical bugs after we submit all the codes to DARPA. <laughs> oh, okay. So actually we already know that our system is likely that you know because of bugs, our system is not uh, fully him itself. So, uh, yeah. Well, hey, thank you, thank you so much. Again, your team was forty-two beyond bugs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, thank you so much for sharing. I cannot wait to dive into your system when you release it. Uh, thank you for thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for watching, and hack on.